two points there I want to count I want to counter with and have you respond to. Number one is mathematically rate of change coming off a period in which the entire economy around the world was shut down. We have no history of that. So naturally all these prices are going to come down, which is kind of a goalpost argument. The question I would ask you to is to follow up is do those commodity price declines that you're describing though act as a stimulant in a way to a consumer who a year ago was dealing with a much more sluggish economy. Now they've actually got a 4.9% and their oil's quite a bit cheaper. They will when they get cheap, if history is a guide. So let's not just do commodities, let's start with CPI. The number one component in CPI is owner's equivalent rent, which is based on homes. The average median price of a home in this country has doubled in 10 years, from around 200 to 400. So that base is pretty darn high. Just got to trickle down a little, like it did from 2006 and 2011. The big difference was the Fed started easing in 2007. We're not getting that. So from a commodity standpoint, here's my outlook. I said it a year ago, and I'll repeat what um, Roger Babson said in 1929. I'll repeat what I said a year ago, and this is the fact is I think crude oil is going down to $40 a barrel. Why? Because it's made lower highs and lower lows since the peak in 2008, and the average cost of production in this, in this country is around $60 a barrel, and we have an excess of supply in this country. We are producing, and in Canada, it's about six million barrels a day. 2008, it was a deficit. And if you include the surplus out of Saudi Arabia, it's massive. Who's getting hurt by this? China, there's a net importer. So from that standpoint, what typically happens, you need to get cheap to reset. You need to shut off that supply, increase the demand, we're nowhere near that. And that's what happened recently, had this little spike mm. in unleaded gas and crude oil, and ECB hiked, the Bank of England hiked, the Fed said they would, in July they did, and that, I look at it, if we had dripped lower already, the Fed would have hiked another 100 basis points sure. this year. So it's the number one thing now is liquidity. Liquidity is negative, I, like I'd like to point out. Money supply is negative, just the rules of money markets and business and finances. When you get that two note at 5%, you see money supply is negative, you're supposed to say thank you very much, which <laughs> Mr. Druckenmill did recently.